All right. Welcome uh, to Radicam TV. There you go. Radicam <laughs> Sorry, TV. That's your eyes. Eyes. All right. Today we're going to talk about uh, pillions, and um, we've got uh, Cornish Stig. Yeah. Is going to help us today, and um, we'll show you how we get on and off bikes and how, and how it affects riding. And yeah. Generally, talk about that. I think. Yeah. A few hints and tips of four pillions, <clears throat> and for the riders. So when you get, I'm going to take him one. Only one pillion. You said hints and tips, four pillions. Oh. All right, so um, what we're doing today is we're just going to talk about pillions and all that, all aspects of pillion riding and that kind of stuff. So we're using uh, Cornish Stig today. And um, basically what I do when, I, when, when um, Stig's riding with me is um, the engine can be running, it can be off it doesn't make any difference but I always have the side stand down and I do that because I see people struggling sometimes with their feet the bike up off the off the side stand and they're holding on to it and they're saying yes get on and the bike wobbles all over the place so that's what the side stands there for it gives you a little bit of extra stability so when you're ready Stig do you want to get on so obviously you're going to brace yourself while they get on like a small car tours Sometimes you have to lean forward so you don't get bashed helmets. And that's as simple as that. Now once they're on, then you can take the, uh, the side stand up and switch the engine on. And um, so now my engine's running. It's a bit windy today actually. Um, some bikes have it, some bikes don't, but uh, on my bike we've got the adjustable suspension. So I always have the suspension set a bit low because it makes it easier for the pillion to get on that way. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust my suspension so that it goes up to uh, two people, which makes the bike rise. I'm very lucky that the GS does this, the GS Adventure does this, so GS does it as well. And then um, once it's in position, we can ride off. Waiting for Toby, who's going to be filming behind us. There he is, look. Ah, ah. He's got his clown suit on. Okay, obviously when you move off and you have a pillion on the bike, you've got to be a little bit careful. If you've not done it for a while, it's worth practicing. And just take it steady. I see so many people pull away from uh, uh, from a standing, a standing still position and suddenly, you know, they're trying to build up speed and everything. This is quite tricky. We've got to get up a lane first. It's a bit bumpy at the top. But just take things steady. It's not a race. Okay, so we're pulling away. No reason to have your feet down for a long time, just because you've got a pillion on the back. And you will notice there is instantly um, a, a different feel to the bike. Obviously, it's heavier with um, with uh, more with two people on on the back of it. So you need to take that into account when you're accelerating, when you're braking and all aspects of riding because if you want your pillion just to, to enjoy the ride you've got to think of take a little bit of uh, time to think about them as well how many times do you see people perched on the back of sport bikes predominantly young ladies I would, I would uh, hazard and um, they're having it looks like they've got a horrendous time they're hanging on they're not relaxed which makes it difficult for the rider to um, drive if he's got a person on the back who doesn't want to lean with them and all the rest of it. And these uh, sport bikes are quite often have a very, very small seat, knees hunched up under the, uh, under the rider and they're just basically in a crouch position sat on the seat and it doesn't look very comfortable at all. Now if you add into that um, hard accelerating, hard braking they're not enjoying that at all and I would hazard a guess that anybody who sits in that position for a long time won't want to do it very often so if you're going to take a pillion out think about them for a while as a an advanced rider we tend to um, look at this Cornish sunshine coming out of the sky as an advanced rider we tend to plan considerably further in advance than uh, a lot of people do and that's important when you're riding with a pillion 
and it's important for many reasons. You don't want the pillion when if you have to suddenly brake quickly, just to have the you know the, the pillion slams forward into the back of your helmet. It's not comfortable for you, and it's not comfortable for the pillion. And it also puts them on edge. You need them to be as relaxed as you possibly can be, or as they possibly can be, whilst driving. So it doesn't take much. As I'm coming down over the brow of a hill here, I'm looking down towards where the road is going. I can see this car's coming towards me, but I also know there's going to be a change in speed. So rather than wait till the very last minute, where I go from the national speed limit down to 60, with a pillion on the back, I can start to plan way in advance and start coming back down through the gears. So by the time I get to the speed limit, I'm doing the speed limit. Obviously, people drive a lot faster and some people ignore the speed limits completely. But if I was to approach that speed limit and then shove my brakes on, the pillion then gets the position of the uh, while they're riding gets slammed into the back of me and then if you accelerate they get ripped backwards you know if they haven't got something to uh, to rest on but it makes for a better experience for them nice chap that so here we are down into uh, it's actually Perrinporth this is quite a steep hill and I'm not accelerating down here, I'm just letting the bike take me because you'll find that with the actual weight of a, another person on the bike the, the inertia that the bike generates is increased as well so you don't need to necessarily accelerate down a hill like you or drive down a hill like you would be normally and conversely if you're riding with a pillion on the back you don't want to have to keep stopping and putting your feet down and all that old malarkey because that that really does wear quite thin after a while so if you've got a junction coming up here and you can approach it in a way that you don't need to stop like I'm doing now it means it's less effort for you it's less wear and tear on the um... wow <laughs> I can't believe that lady just did that it's less wear and tear on your brakes and your gears but here we are we're going through uh, a town now I got through quite a complex junction there's a right hand turn and then immediately followed by a left but cars use that as a u-turn uh, and all sorts of things so it is quite complicated but we didn't have to stop we didn't have to put my feet down because some people when they're when they have their pillions on they look really really unstable when they're trying to place their feet on the floor um, and that makes it that makes it even more complicated so by giving yourself nice wide positions on the road and looking ahead, planning more. It'll help you with the overall ride. It's clearly advanced rider, te uh, rider techniques we're using here. It doesn't matter whether you're Rossborough or IEM. But that's where training like that falls into place. And it helps with this kind of a ride. I've spoken to uh, quite a lot of people um, who have been pillions on bikes and I don't remember many of them having good experiences of it and to me that shows a lack of uh, a re a respect if you want from the actual rider, the, the driver, the rider of the bike um, if you've got a person who's on the back you have a responsibility for that person and you obviously don't want to scare them no matter how much they scream you really want to make sure that you're safe as well as them it's very easy for as we've just seen you know coming down the hill there a guy instead of waiting pushed his way past and we had a lady pull in front of us at the last junction okay that is all could be all hard braking which will make the uh, the, the pallet the, the pillion have not the most comfortable of rides so you need to take that into account. Also, the pillion needs to understand how your bike works. Now, I'm very lucky because Cornish Stig has been out on this bike uh, a few times and is completely relaxed. And you have to give them a little brief sometimes. If they've never done it before, certainly tell them that, you know, when we go around a corner, when I'm leaning down, for example, this left-hand bend now, 
I want you to lean to the left with the bike as well. Don't try and lean the other way because that destabilizes the bike. Once you're up to speed and running along, there's very little notice of uh, your pillion on the back, to be honest. But you will have to take a short time to work to work out, you know, what your how your braking distances will change. And this is where your gearbox is going to be used more. Don't rely on your brakes all the time. You notice that I was in fourth gear doing 60 miles an hour and the car was turning left so I dropped down two gears which meant the braking involved was minimal but the engine braking did a lot now some bikes have engine braking BMWs are, are well well known for being able to brake from uh, quite a fast speed down quite quickly and that's the glory of the engine but um, you need to take out take a little bit of time to work that out and see that uh, you know how you you can slow down because if you're going to be relying on your brakes for example if you're in traffic or something like that it won't take long for your pads to heat up quite quickly and once you get pads heating up then you'll get brake fade and then your brakes don't work at all uh, this GS Adventure I'm riding has got uh, a quick shifter on it which means that once I've put it into gear using the clutch I don't have to use the clutch again until I stop I can use the just the flicking the pedal up and down in either direction and that makes riding really quite simple however with a pillion on the back I find personally that I tend to use the clutch quite a lot more it's not wrong it's, um, and the clutch is obviously capable of doing it but I just feel that sometimes the um, the quick shift, if you're going at slow speeds, is certainly quite an abrupt thing to go through if you haven't got many revs on. Uh, and that can also make the uh, pillion unsettled as well, sat on the back. Sounds like the pillion's having a nightmare to journey on a lot of bikes, but um, that's what we're trying to uh, trying to alleviate. And like with all riding, with the extra weight you're carrying, even when you're touring and you've got loads of baggage on, you know, people take, take quite heavy bags with them, you have to adjust your riding style to accommodate that. The extra weight, the effect your, the weight of your pillion or your luggage will have on your bike, for example, as you go around a corner. Um, and it's just, it's just understanding the physics of how your bike goes along. If you're braking hard, you've got all the weight of yourself, the engine being thrown forward onto the front disc brakes, assuming you've got discs, um, and that takes all the drive away from your rear tyre because your tyre then becomes a bit, a bit, uh, a bit looser, uh, lighter on the on the on the road, and also if you have your pillion on there as well, you've got the added weight of that which means you have to increase your braking power as well so it's much easier much easier to use your um, your gears appropriately and it's about being smooth or another word you could use is probably efficient. You've got to be efficient when you're riding with a pillion or heavy baggage on. I think I must have my uh, cloaking device over the bike today and nobody's seeing us. You wonder why a guy like that pulls out in front of you and rides for 300 meters and then turns left. You know, if he'd have waited another five seconds, we'd have been past him and he wouldn't have held any traffic up. But that's the standard of driving that we're encountering in the UK at the moment. Now, as you can see, 
we're on quite a bendy road we're doing 60 miles an hour and it hasn't impa impacted my riding style at all the fact that I've got somebody sat on the back and the fact that that person Cornish Stig is um, is reacting perfectly with the bike as I go around the left arm bend they're leaning to the left as I go around the right they're leaning to the right that makes such a huge difference coming up and you're going to be t you're going to be lean lent over so this corner is a good one so you can see that she's not leaning in she's not doing anything she's just allowing gravity gravity and the bike to just take her where the bike needs to go so if you you imagine a line going right up the top box right up the back of her back through the top of her head that line is staying upright with the bike it's leaning left leaning right leaning left just like that rather than her leaning right and then the bike leaning right and then her trying to be up because it's going to stop the bike going over and therefore stop all the planning that the riders made for that corner and the bike feels completely different now it feels more planted on the on the road with two people on it So we're approaching a roundabout where we're going to turn right here. It's a good 500 metres away from me now, I've just seen the first signpost. I'm going down from, through the gearbox rather than using my brakes. So I'm doing 40 miles an hour, I'm in third. It's quite a difficult roundabout to get round because you can't see what's coming from the right till the very last minute. So I don't have to brake suddenly, I can see the car's waiting and they're going to be going because there's nothing else coming onto the roundabout so ooh, look at that didn't have to stop and that's what it's all about because if you have to stop you've got to put both feet down to keep the bike stable clearly before you if your pillion isn't used to riding with you you need to tell them that they don't put their feet down at all keep them up and it's important that you're relaxed because if you tense up when you when you're approaching junctions and have to put your feet down because you've got adrenaline running through your body that causes the body to tense up a little bit which means that when you eventually need to move your legs to put your feet down your reactions will be that much slower and it'll feel very very stiff and also if you're riding for a long time for you know you've done a, a long spell on a motorway or something coming up to, you know something like a couple hundred miles or something and then you pull in for a coffee break it's no good waiting until just before you stop the bike for you to practice you know for you to get ready to to stop you need to be stopping and moving your leg muscles so your legs understand that there's something happening You've got blood flowing into them way before that because that means you're then going to be that much more relaxed so it's all about planning and you can see by the the way that Pili and Stig is sat on the bike that she's really relaxed we've said before that you can't see that she's got um, her elbows clenched or, or her fists clenched so when she's holding on she's just literally got a very very light grip of the handles the grab rails she's going with the flow you can see that her body's not rigid but she is actually going up and down with the bike and the contours of the bike and the way the bike is moving is affecting her body and she's just going with it corners like these she's just letting the bike take her where she needs to go because after all if you've got a pillion, we'd probably argue that you're not going to be on a racetrack. You're not going to be using the roads on a racetrack. The fact that you've got a pillion with you, it's one of those kind of intimate things you can have with your partner, that you're experiencing different things in a much, much more conducive way to fun, to enjoying things, to seeing things, to experiencing different things that are happening both with, you know, between both of you. And you can see now that the pillion stick has got her left hand on her thigh 
totally, re totally relaxed, and that's obviously showing that there's just 100% trust in Mark, in the rider, but also 100% com she's 100% comfortable is what I'm trying to say. She's not, you know, anxious. She's looking around. She's not. She's paying attention to where she's going, but you can see that the helmet's moving from side to side, so she's aware with wh of what's going around. Now. I know that Pillion Stig isn't a biker, she's not a rider. However, she's a driver and she'll be looking around to see what else is happening. Perhaps not in the same way that Mark is, because Mark's looking for dangers and hazards and corners and making sure the ride is right as well as enjoying everything. But it's, it's really lovely to see people with their partners on their bikes, especially when they come away on tours with us, because it's just, so nice that two people in a relationship or even just two friends can experience something in an intimate way and I mean intimate because you're sat right with each other you're experiencing the same thing so when you're going through olive fields in the middle of Portugal and Spain and places like that that we go you can really smell it you can smell the lemon and lime trees you can smell the diesel you can smell all of the wonderful smells that comes with being on a tour and being on a motorbike and you're doing that together so you know, imagine the things that you're going to have to talk about when you get to your destination God, Jay, what did you think of that that lemon plantation that we drove through oh wasn't the smell amazing and you know I've been on tours as you as you both know we both we both tour guides and it's always so lovely when that when you're talking to people and you say wow that was a beautiful beautiful road and God, the smells were amazing. And then you can see them both beam, their eyes are beaming, they're saying, wow, that was such amazing, it was so amazing to smell that lemon, the limes, all the different smells that were going on when you were around touring. And you did it together, so you've got something in common about the trip. Now obviously you need uh, some kind of a communication system between if you haven't got a, a comms, uh, you know, uh, um, an intercom between the two of you. And to be honest, I've, I don't use the intercom, I, I really don't quite understand why people do when all they can hear is breathing down the back of somebody's neck, it sounds a bit weird. So I like to listen to music when I'm driving. And uh, Cornish Stig likes that as well, he likes to listen to some music, so that, that sorts that problem out. But you need to sort out a communication system for yourself and so it could be anything, you know, just a tap on the leg to make sure you're alright if they reach round put their thought up to say they're fine um, you know obviously if you're on a long journey you need pee stops and things like that so you need to sort of talk about that how long are you going to ride for when we're going to stop all the usual sort of stuff and then you also give them the option that if you're driving too fast you know they need to be able to tell you there's nothing worse than sitting in a car with a driver who's driving too fast and you're all thinking my god you know we're going to get out of this alive it's the same on a bike in fact it's probably worse on a bike because if a pillion hasn't done much riding they're not necessarily going to be that confident on a bike and it seems a pretty shallow thing to scare them so give them the option that if you're driving too fast or you do anything that scare them the signal that would um, tell you that they need to slow down that could be anything you know it could be a little poke in the ribs tap on the back of your helmet um, <laughs> an elbow to the throat anything like that but you need to make sure that they have a system where if they're feeling frightened or vulnerable they need to be able to slow you down and that's not in uh, that's not being negative that's just being realistic and taking into account that not everybody is happy to ride on a bike now we've got a bit of dual carriageway, we can get up to some speed. So I can get up to 60, uh, 70 miles an hour here now on this dual carriageway. And it's not about getting up there as fast as you can. Bikes are very capable of doing 0 to 60 in milliseconds, obviously. But your pillion isn't going to enjoy that. Their back is going to break if, they if they've got to hang on. and hang really tight, uh, hold on really tight for that and it's no fun for them it's about being relaxed 
Now I've only done about 15 miles on this journey and we'll be stopping soon. Now 15 miles you're gonna say your legs aren't tired, your legs aren't your legs aren't tired. But why do you sit on the pedals here now in between changing gears and things? You can start tensing your muscles up, get a bit of blood flowing into the muscles. Because we're going to be stopping and we're going to let the pillion get off. We're even going to be doing a bit of slow speed manoeuvring. Here we are, Damrell's motorcycles in uh, Fradden. So I'm driving up nice and slow. My feet are down and I hardly use the brake then. I've gone into neutral. The bike's gone over into the side stand and I'm still keeping my hand on the brake. I give a thumbs up and the Cornish Stig is going to unclip herself. She's got one of those headlight jackets on and then get off just to lean a little bit further forward so that uh, we don't bash helmets and that is riding with a pillion on a bike and how easy it can be so we'll speak to you soon